Hello Internet and hello Productivity Nerds. You've seen productivity YouTubers use to do is maybe watch some tips and tricks, um, how to prioritize your tasks, how to use filters, how to use your inbox. But have you seen one of the most over the top to do is workflows? A needlessly complex way to get things done, a to do system which sets the groundwork for automation, a task list approach that can be called a work of art or a, a really, really stupid methods of doing the easy and simple things the hard way. With other words, you want to see something cool? Stick around as we are doing stupid nerdy things with Todoist and have some fun. Unleash the productivity. Like and subscribe. Greetings productivity enthusiasts, welcome back to the Toaster Botnet, where I babble about random things until you either get bored or hit the subscribe button. This week's topic, my Todoist workflow. The Toaster Botnet, the go-to hub for all things organization, efficiency and mastering the art of getting things done. Today we are diving deep into the heart of productivity with an in-depth exploration of Todoist task management tool that has revolutionized the way I personally tackle my daily to-dos. I'm excited to share my personalized Todoist workflow along with some advanced tips and tricks that will take your productivity game to new heights. Whether you are a seasoned Todoist user or a newcomer looking to unlock the full potential of this tool, you are in for a treat. Many say that fine-tuning a productivity system is actually procrastination in disguise, but I actually was in need of a more powerful system and I'm working with it quite some time now and I think I can safely say I'm really productive and get things done. Not everything I want to, but most of it. It's also important to note that my weird workflow is quite complex and it kind of developed gradually over time. So it might not work for you and you might need to find your own way of doing things but nevertheless you might find some inspiration here and there uh, and it helps you to develop your own productivity system. I myself got started very simple back then. At the very beginning I had one list, just one one single list uh, in a simple text file. Then I moved on to very basic to-do apps and gradually and consistently stepped up my game and my workflow. I didn't want to reinvent the wheel every time I was planning my to-dos, so the next logical step was to do repeating tasks, which reschedule automatically after some days, weeks, months or sometimes even years. What I had then was an endless, eternal repeating to-do list or better say multiple lists, but it still was just simple lists and I added or removed some tasks along the way. As you can imagine this got really confusing and overwhelming very quickly. So at this point I decided I needed a more powerful app to organize my life and after some research I settled with Todoist. I moved all my tasks over manually and gradually moved from novice to productivity nerd. Todoist was way better. Projects, filters, labels, proper prioritization, um, way more powerful than the basic to-do list I was using before. And as you will see later, it solved my problems with overload. Um, Todoist and especially the Pro version has a lot of features and, and without exaggerating, uh, it transformed my life and made me way more productive and organized. So let's do a crash course on Todoist basics real quick. So for those of you that don't know the app, uh, you can follow the rest of the video. And if you already know how to do this works, you can skip ahead uh, to the advanced stuff if you want to or don't or stick around, I don't care. I put the chapters down in the doobly-doo for this. So anyway, let's go. Todoist basics. All right, let's look at the Todoist app here. Um, if you start out, you have the overview right there. Uh, let's go through the important bits. Uh, the inbox. The inbox is for capturing stuff. If you are, if you are a David Allen fanboy, you know what I mean by that. 
And for everybody else, it's for writing to-dos and ideas down uh, very quickly and on the go uh, to process them later. As soon as you have some time or if you go sit down on your desk, um, you can order it, categorize it, prioritize it and put it into the proper projects. A good habit to strive for is an empty inbox. Don't just use it as a dumping ground, always bring order into the chaos. So, let's move on. The today view. The today view is pretty self-explanatory. It's all the tasks that are scheduled for today. The upcoming shows you all the upcoming tasks in the coming days and weeks. And you can also change the views to a board if you want to. Priorities. Um, yeah, you can prioritize tasks by giving them uh, a color. Uh, there's priority 1 up to priority 4, uh, with 1 being red and urgent and 4 being no priority and no color. Todoist in the Pro version also has reminders uh, for scheduling notifications or you can do location-based reminders which use your GPS position to notify you of a task, uh, like when you are arriving somewhere or leaving some area or something like that. But I don't want to get into this right now um, because that's not that important for this video. And we have much to talk about. So projects, let's rather talk about the other stuff here. Um, well, here you have projects which can hold sub-projects and tasks. After all, you need to categorize and arrange it all. But you can also label them with labels, that's also another form of categorization. Labels are just as the name suggests, uh, labels or tags which you apply to a task. They are basically a mechanism to construct your own workflow. Because by labeling stuff you not only can add another layer of information to the task, you also can later use filters to filter the task based on this custom label which might sound pretty basic, but which is really powerful. So when you have your labels, you can create filters for them. Or for priorities, or for due dates, or for projects, or whatever. And you can use these all in an OR or AND concatenation, or chains if you so will. Um, meaning it's basically a very basic, I, I don't know, um, scripting or something. <laughs> I don't know how to call it, uh, some kind of descriptive language with a syntax, basically. And this will let you do very cool things, because with these features combined, you can now design your own workflow however you want. And of course, you can overdo it, like I have. And we will get to my workflow in a bit. Um, just some clarifications here before we begin. As I said, I moved everything over to Todoist manually like nearly a thousand tasks back then and once again I was very motivated and I noticed right away how a more powerful task app makes a lot of difference in my productivity. So I went on being productive and ticking off tasks and tweaking my system um, but then suddenly I was back to square one. Well not to square one but to the old problem again. After some time I ran into the same problem as, as before with my other to-do list, too much tasks. The today view became too overwhelming, again I struggled with decision fatigue, um, again I felt crushed by all the things I had to do for that day, so I again had to find a solution. But now I was on a more feature-rich app. At this point I realized I needed the pro version. Um, there was no way around it because I needed more projects, more labels, more filters and I started using filters and labels extensively and got to work to re redesign my workflow. Then it kind of developed over time and it got way more complex. So to finally show you some of it, here are my filters and here you see my labels. And here on the side you see my favorite filters which I use on a daily basis to get my stuff done. 
And here are all my projects. Currently there are very few tasks because I have vacation and if I have vacation I do everything in advance and don't schedule that much so I have some time to relax and chill. Uh, anyway, uh, okay, at first this might look overly complex, overly crowded or overly stupid. And it probably is needlessly complicated, over the top and needlessly stupid. But Bear with me, I'll explain this um, step by step. And maybe after we are done, you can understand this workflow and why it makes me super productive. Saves me time and it also is super cool. It'll all make sense in the end, hopefully. So let's get into it. The most important, let's begin with the most important tasks. And they have the label most important, obviously, and as in the Eisenhower matrix, they are not necessarily urgent, but these are the tasks that are important to me. Stuff that moves the needle and brings me forward in life. They are tasks that help me improve, grow, better my life, or optimize my life in some way. Or they are hobbies which are really important to me. Point is, as long as I get this stuff done, I will progress and move my life forward. Which is the reason for this most important category. Um, yeah, just so you, you get an idea, uh, some examples might be working on my YouTube video, optimizing or automating some process or workflow which makes my life easier in the long run, um, something to improve my social life or my monthly or weekly planning sessions um, or learning something like watching a tutorial or expand my skill set, uh, you get the gist. Um, it's not what I necessarily do first on that day, but it's the first thing I look at to be aware of what's important for the day. Because some of that might be focus work, which we'll talk about later in the video. Very urgent, and here we come to the urgent tasks. Um, basically, to do is priority one the red circles. Basically, this is stuff that needs to be done today, or appointments, or events that happen today, as well as preparation tasks for set events. Examples might include here doctor's appointments, uh, basically any appointment as long as if it's during the current day. Something that has a deadline, um, maybe a deadline today or a deadline tomorrow. Um, you know, stuff that would be really bad to miss or postpone or which can't actually be postponed. If you grind like this long enough, sooner or later, uh, all the really urgent things will disappear, which is pretty interesting. Um, to explain, um, I noticed that if I'm always trying to be proactive, the only things that were left on my urgent list uh, at some point were just appointments, because everything else is taken care of in advance. But that made the urgent category somewhat obsolete. In the end, I just started setting deadlines for myself, like deadlines for uploading videos or something similar or for getting something specific done just so I can push myself uh, a little bit more. So important or urgent, the things that need the primary focus for the day. So overdue, that's the stuff that didn't get done. It's the stuff that I postponed uh, but still want to do this this week. If I plan to procrastinate on these for longer than a week, I move them to the backlog. The backlog, probably a familiar term for those who work in IT, is basically all the tasks I want to do someday. But I am postponing them indefinitely. After that comes the vital category. This is stuff that is not super urgent, but still somewhat urgent. Uh, it's, in my case, priority two in Todoist, the orange circle. That's the stuff that should definitely get done. But it won't be world ending if I miss it or I don't get around to it immediately. If something is due in two days or in a week or something, I could still postpone it a bit, but not for too long. Also stuff which is vital for my health or well-being, like for example taking meds or something like that. It won't kill me if I forget it, but I shouldn't forget it like three days in a row or something like that. 
These uh, three or four filters are often used uh, to get an overview, uh, to get an idea what is really important for the day. That's basically just for more or less information. We haven't talked about my actual workflow yet. Up until now there was nothing special. You've seen it all before. So now it gets more interesting. The morning filter. Um, well, this is just my morning routine. Like brushing teeth, taking meds, drink water, take vitamins. I don't actually need to be reminded of these tasks uh, since I do them automatically. But if I have them there, it makes sure one of the first things I do in the morning is opening up to do is and basically uh, start ticking boxes and it's basically like habit stacking in the book Atomic Habits from James Clear. It gets me started for the day and it gives me the first dopamine rush of uh, completed tasks and now I want to tick more. It really kind of works, honestly. After the morning routine, the first batch of tasks are tier 1 tasks. These are usually tasks that need to be done early in the day. Or they are tasks that need a short amount of time to complete. I like having my easy tasks first, because it gives me motivation and gets the ball rolling. They are mostly tasks I need to do around the house or putting the laundry in the washing machine, uh, clean something in my apartment or really simple stuff like making my bed or letting some air in. It's important to note here that all my tasks are broken down into small bits as much as possible. Uh, I don't have something like let's clean the apartment, uh, that's too big of a task. Uh, instead I break them down into really really small chunks like clean the kitchen sink or something like that. Clean the toilet, dust the shelves, uh, take out the trash or clean the coffee machine or something like that. And these tasks are spread over weeks and months and they are automatically repeating and reappear after a certain amount of time. This is really handy because it's basically semi, well it's, it's automated planning. So I never think about them or include them in my planning. Um, they are just pop up repeatedly after some time. Over time I managed to fine tune the time uh, between tasks uh, for the rescheduling uh, that it's perfect so it just pops up before it, something gets dirty again or something like that. Um, it took me a few years to get it optimal. But I have a really clean apartment so it works. And I hardly notice the cleaning tasks because they are all micro tasks, could be done in a minute or two. This method worked out really well for me. Um, anyway, moving on. Um, after tier 1 comes tier 2. It's more of the same. The difference here is just that usually the tier 2 tasks take a longer time to complete. Like if a tier 1 task would be clean the kitchen sink. Uh, a tier 2 task would be to mop the whole apartment floor. They are tasks that are bigger and require more effort. With these filters done, basic household maintenance is taken care of mostly. They also include other tasks and stuff I need to remember, but for the most part it's cleaning and basic life maintenance. After I'm done with tier 1 and tier 2 tasks, I usually grab a coffee and sit down on my desk which brings us to the next filter, desk one. As the name suggests, um, these are tasks that need to be done sitting down on a desk or working on a computer. For me, it's mostly computer tasks because I'm trying to live a paperless life and I'm all digital. Uh, if you're interested in paperless living, um, check out my video about it. I put the link down in the video description. Like tier one, Desk one are really small tasks. Can be done quickly and instantly and can be categorized as micro tasks. Uh, example here would be checking emails, checking my online banking and finances, uh, buying the dip, running some backup scripts, uh, updating my workstation or server, uh, I don't know, posting a meme. I'm not kidding, that's actually a repeating task. I got a meme pipeline. 
Which reminds me, I will run out soon. I have to collect new memes. Send me memes. Contact down in the doobly-doo. And desk two. And you guessed it, these are tasks that take a little bit longer. I don't know, around five minutes or 15 minutes or something uh, could vary. Examples would be paying bills, ordering groceries, uh, ordering other stuff, searching for birthday gifts, creating some lame design for my toaster shop, or doing my monthly budget, making phone calls, writing emails, you get it. At this point in time, we have covered basic life maintenance and micro tasks. But there's another category for the day, which is focus. This is where it gets interesting. This is where the real work gets done. It's the focus work. What I mean by that is something that needs concentrated, focused work for longer periods of time. Like something where you need some kind of flow state, you know, flow state when you are basically in a tunnel and focus really hard on the task at hand, no distractions, just working for like half an hour or an hour or even longer without interruptions. Okay, some of you now probably wonder why focus work is so far down the workflow. I know uh, that's strange, but hear me out. Some, if not most people, want their focus work to be the first thing they do. Because if they get it out of the way first, they can focus better. I noticed that for me personally, it's the other way around. If I have the peace of mind that everything is taken care of and all the things are done for the day, I can relax and get some focus work in the evening. Otherwise, I'm just thinking about all the stuff I still have to do and I can't concentrate on the task at hand. If I have done all the other minor things for the day first, I can sit on my computer and really get into flow state because I'm way more relaxed and I won't rush through the tasks because I know if I'm done, I'm also done for the whole day. Your brain might work differently and you might want to get your focus work in first thing in the morning. If that's you, no problem, just move your focus filter somewhere to the top. But I got a pro tip for you. Never schedule more than one or two focus tasks in your day at once. To be honest, two is a stretch already, especially if you have a day job from nine to five. If you arrive at home in the evening, it's really hard to get extended focus work going. Uh, like really, really hard. Uh, go easy on yourself uh, to not get into burnout territory. Examples for focus work would be writing YouTube scripts, editing videos, coding or automating something, writing on your novel, or writing a blog post, or doing some tutorial to learn something new, widening your skill set basically. So focus stuff, learning an instrument, whatever it is that you want or need to do that requires attention or focus. Uh, next up we have need to go out. <laughs> there's the stuff that I need to leave the house for. Like there's not much more to say to it. Uh, it's tasks that require me to go somewhere or drive somewhere. If I check this filter and it's empty, I can stay at home and I don't need to get dressed and can't just stay in boxer shorts. Um, noon, that's a filter that's barely used. Uh, it's reserved for stuff I can do at noon, which is mostly reserved for things I want to get done during a lunch break at work, for example. I don't use this filter very often, but if I do, it's something like a phone call which needs to be done during office hours or something similar which I can or want to do in between in the lunch break. And now we come to the evening filter. Tasks labeled with evening can only be done in the evening, like taking mats again or journal and write down the highlight of the day or put down the shutters or basically an evening routine. I also use the evening label for some simple reminders, like if something important comes up or urgent comes up the next day, I just put a reminder here to just to be aware of it and get reminded of it once more because I basically live in my to-do list and check it like five million times a day. 
yeah, if I totally forgot something or forgot to look in my calendar for the week or something like that, just so I will be reminded once more, it's basically a safety net. Example is when I have the early shift at work or I have a doctor's appointment first thing in the morning. Put a reminder here so I don't forget. Today remaining, yeah, that's basically everything that isn't somehow otherwise labeled or categorized. That's just in case I miss labeling something. So I forgot to label something and it's a safety net that helps that no task slips through the cracks. So imagine if I forget to label something and it gets buried in all the other tasks. Never mind. Planning today. Because planning is my favorite activity, uh, it comes last. Uh, so when the day is over, there might be still some planning tasks in there, maybe planning something for the next day. Usually this label or category is important for the weekly and monthly and yearly planning. If the month uh, rolls over, this gets filled with tasks that basically help me plan my future. But we'll talk more about planning later in the video. Engage coffee break! So this was it for the daily tasks. Some days I get everything completed. Some days I don't. But most of the time this system makes sure my life is in order, I move forward and I maintain results. I like to try to make tomorrow always a tiny bit better than today. And I want to accomplish that doing things that improve my life somehow or make my life easier, however insignificant. Small steps add up. But we are not done yet. No, no, we are not done. There's more. There is a lot more. What if I'm done for the day and I'm really motivated? What when I see what comes tomorrow if I want to do tasks in advance? If I'm on a streak and I don't want to lose momentum? Then comes a separator and the future tasks. Tomorrow is self-explanatory. Um, they are tasks that are scheduled for tomorrow. At this point I need to explain something because I have time-dependent tasks. There might be tasks a lot of times that can't be done in advance or that need to be done on this specific day. For this I have the label time-dependent. Tasks with these labels don't show up there in any way or form or in the following filters because it's not yet an action item and I can't do anything about it now. I don't want it to clutter my view. Tasks like taking meds or morning routines or something like that, that's the prime example, are mainly time dependent tasks. I can't take five pills five days in advance, that's not how meds work. So I don't need to see those tasks here. But there are also tasks which can be done in advance, but not for like a week or multiple days in advance. Maybe just one day. Like I can't do my laundry one day earlier, but I can't do it a week in advance because I didn't even wear the clothes, 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 Jesus yet. So I introduced another label called one day in advance. Um, this task then shows up in the tomorrow view. So if something is labeled time dependent and one day in advance, it shows up in tomorrow. Uh, if it's only time dependent, it doesn't show up in tomorrow. But the one day in advance only shows up in tomorrow and not in the other upcoming weeks or days or in the following filters we're going to talk about now. Saturday, these are tasks that show me the upcoming Saturday in case I want to free up my weekend somehow. This week's tasks just shows me all the tier 1 and tier 2 tasks for the week. This week desks shows me all the desk tasks and focus shows me all the focus work for the week. Go out. And of course, maybe if I want to know in advance if I need to be somewhere or go somewhere. So this is pretty handy. Remaining, same as above, here lands everything that otherwise would slip through the cracks. Sunday is reserved for the weekly planning session. 
and we'll talk about planning in a minute. This was it for all the tasks and the basic workflow. And now we come to some special filters. Another separator and we got special filters like most important next. This just shows me all the important stuff. That stuff that's coming in the next 15 days. This is just for information and to get an overview. But this here is quite useful and I use this very often. And this shows me the upcoming planning tasks for the next four days. This comes into play when I completed all the tasks for the current week in advance. Like if I'm super duper productive and motivated and I have done all the stuff that was planned for this week, uh, I can now see the upcoming planning tasks for the coming days and more importantly Sunday. So now, and this is the fun part for me, I can start doing my planning in advance. I like planning. Lately, I often get everything done by Friday and will do my preparation and planning for the next week even before the weekend. And if this is done, I can now be lazy on the weekend and do absolutely jack shit with a clear conscience. Well, if I have a very busy week, this won't happen. And in this case, I have to do my planning on Sundays. Upcoming events. This just shows me future events for the next 90 days, like appointments or something like that. Well, like my calendar. The only difference is uh, this is stuff I have already committed to. Like, um, I also use a calendar extensively. Um, um, but there's a lot of stuff in there I want to know about but it's not very urgent and important or something like that. It's just nice to know and I don't look at the calendar all the time. So I have the really important and urgent tasks in to do it as well. So I'm driving on two lanes here. Well, fun stuff. Um, I plan to schedule some stuff. Yeah, this isn't used yet. I plan to schedule some fun stuff in there for myself and use this for tasks I really enjoy. Upcoming weeks, um, yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. It just looks further and further into the future. Eat the Frog uh, is an interesting one. You know, these tasks where they say, uh, eat the frog first thing in the morning. These are tasks that I really, really hate and I don't want to do them at all, to be honest. And this is the filter that shows me those. This is so that maybe I can see them in advance and sometimes do them in advance to just get over with it. You know, proactively, like weeks ahead of time. Sometimes it works and sometimes I don't even want to look at this category and I just wait until it pops up in my today view and then I hate myself. On the go, uh, this is a useful one. Uh, I use this when I'm waiting somewhere or if I'm on a train or when I'm bored at work or anywhere out and about where I have some time to kill and I don't know what to do. These are small micro tasks for these situations. Uh, examples here would be to call somebody, check emails, reply to emails, activate my vacuum robot remotely, uh, setting an alarm for an event, scroll through my YouTube subscriptions and put videos in my watch list, posting a meme on my shitpost blog, check my finances, write a grocery list. Most of the time, it's just stuff I can do comfortably on my phone. Um, checklists, um, well, as the name suggests, uh, these are checklists and checklist templates mostly. I use these for special occasions. Um, I want, don't want to get into this, but just an example would be a travel checklist. If I have a vacation coming up, I copy a template from here and schedule the tasks accordingly. Uh, I don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. But that's a topic for another video. I also have a checklist video. Uh, check out my productivity playlist. Well, 
This is a really interesting one, the, the master tasks. Um, because these tasks here are a method which I use to semi-automate my weekly planning sessions. I use these to kinda do my planning like in a few minutes. But honestly, this is a topic for another video that would be out of scope for this video. I want to do an extra deep dive into master tasks in the future. Uh, so if you are interested, subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified. And the backlog. We are almost at the end. We have come to the backlog. Um, this is the bucket of stuff maybe I will get around to someday. With no specific date or deadline. I take at least one of these tasks per week when I do my weekly planning session. And I try to get rid of the backlog bit by bit, but it doesn't work. There's always stuff that gets added, but some things also just stay there for a very long time. If a task has very little chance of being done, I have another level. Uh, I have a project called Backlog Dead, uh, which is basically a task graveyard with tasks I have never done and don't want to do at all. Just in case something gets resurrected and nothing is ever forgotten. Tomorrow work. I have a separate uh, second Todoist account for my job and these are the tasks that are shared between the two accounts. These are just tasks that I have to do on my 9 to 5 tomorrow. Uh, but the Todoist work account is not that complex. I don't have two of those. And all tasks, this is just so I can see a count in the brackets. Uh, I like to know how many tasks overall I have and this is a method to show me that. Currently a bit over a thousand. So, how does my daily workflow look? Well, usually I go from top to bottom. After I get up in the morning, I just check my important and urgent tasks just so I know what are the key items for today and then I go to the morning routine. And then I complete one filter after the other. Tier 1, Tier 2, Desk 1, Desk 2. Yeah, if, if I'm at work I only do the morning routine and continue once I get home and if I have the day off I usually get going right away. Well, and last thing of the day is focus work. And depending on how quickly I get things done and how motivated I am, I start doing things for tomorrow. Maybe I can do stuff in advance. And if tomorrow is also done, I check the rest of the weekends. And on the weekends, I do my planning sessions. Mostly Sunday, if I'm really productive and get everything done, I do it on Friday. And this is where I schedule all the tasks for the upcoming week. If I'm really super duper motivated and proactive, I even use filters like upcoming weeks or eat the frog. But this usually only comes into play if a vacation is coming up and I want to be done by time so I can enjoy my time off. And the rest of all the filters are just for special occasions or for planning and organizing. Except maybe on the go, I use that quite often uh, when I'm out and about. And yeah, that's it, I think. Don't do this at home, kids. This was my to-doist workflow. I advise you to not try to do this at home. If you want to do something similar, I'm just kidding. If you want to do something similar, uh, you are probably better off if you develop your own system over time. Everybody is different and what works for me might not work for you and vice versa. But I hope I gave you some insights on what's possible with Todoist, some inspiration on how to get an effective workflow going with a thousand tasks and at the same time to not get overwhelmed by all the stuff you have or want to do. Developing your own productivity system takes time and trial and error. I didn't go from zero to this overnight. Obviously, it took me years of refining and trying things out until I arrived at a system that makes me super productive and works in the way I need it to work. If you're just starting out, 
just start with a simple list and improve as you go. Over time you will figure out that you maybe work better this way or that way and gradually you start to figure out the process which serves you best. I know my workflow might look crazy to some people but it really works for me and it makes me feel in control. I no longer have the feeling that I'm constantly catching up. I honestly feel like I'm always staying ahead and I'm always ticking tasks in advance and I always get better at it. A con might be I'm now a bit worried and scared I might fall behind again but that's me. And I'm still feeling the pressure of adult life, but I think we all do, that's normal. But at least somehow I feel in control of my life rather than it controlling me, which is a big, big plus. So, enough with the productivity nerd shit now. Uh, go and create your own to-do list. Uh, if you're interested in to-do list and you want to try it out, just in case you are deciding to subscribe to the pro version, check out my referral link down in the video description. That would help a lot. And please subscribe and like and comment and share and everything you have to do to get the algorithm going for me. Well, if you like my content and if you hate it, do it anyways. I sure could use some views. And that's it. Uh, I hope you found some value uh, in this video and as always, thank you for watching and see you next time on the Toaster Podnet. Peace out! Hey, just one more thing. Check out my stupid shop here, shop.pirek.de. All the stuff like stupid merch, stickers, memes, and whatever bullshit. Also, check out my shitpost blog. Check this out. Come on, check it out. You can scroll. So much shitposts. Totally awesome. Until your fingers bleed, all the memes. All the shit posts, go for it. Here, I'll put the link in the. <clears throat> yeah, Toaster Botnet. Check it out. Shit post blog. Also, I made an app. You can find the link down in the video description. Check out my stupid app. It's totally meaningless. It's just a shit post blog again. All right, that's it for now. Laters. Bye bye. Toaster Botnet out. <laughs>